we're looking at this doctrine of hungering for God, the biblical doctrine of hungering for God. And if you understand a doctrine biblically, Christ will be at the center of it. So what is the doctrine of hungering for God? Well, we can only hunger for God through Jesus. And there are only three types of people sitting in this room right now. Healthy, born-again ones hunger for God. Hunger for God is the evidence of salvation. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. If we seek him, we'll find him when we seek with all of our heart. We have that intense longing hunger for him. Hungering for God equals saved and healthy. So that's group number one. In fact, which are you this morning? Are you hungry for God? That's an evidence of salvation. If we took your, your blood test and we measured your hunger, we can tell how connected you are to God because those connected to God hunger and thirst after him. Like David said, like in a dry and thirsty place where there's no water, my soul longs for you. Number two, are you kind of um, muted? I mean, do you ever... Uh, see one of those YouTube videos and they're all talking and you don't hear anything, you look down, there's a little X. It's muted. Is your hunger muted? Do you have a blockage spiritually? By that I mean you can't remember the last time that you were so overwhelmed and felt the presence of God and experienced him face to face and you wish you could have sat there for the rest of the day because it was so truly amazingly an encounter with God. That's what happens every time we open the Bible. We encounter God. Every time. If you're healthy, it's just, it just feeds your soul and you just want more. If you're sick, you can't remember the last time that happened. It's muted. It's blocked. You, you, there's an impediment. In fact, Right now, sitting here, you've looked at your watch four times, and you can't believe that it's, it's still a half hour left, and, and you, know, you haven't gotten anything yet, and you don't get anything out of it, and you wish you hadn't come, you wish you would have been sick or something, and you just feel so far from God. That's being sick. That means you can't remember the last verse you memorized. You can't remember it. In fact, you can't even remember a verse right now. In fact, it bothers you that I'm talking about that. That's sick. That's sick, spiritually. That Jesus said that makes him sick because he said, I bought you at a price, my own blood. And I want you hungering after me. I, I want you, that, that you, as you were saved, as you received the Lord, so walk in him. We, we receive the Lord when we desperately cry out to him and say, you're my only hope. And then many Christians become almost atheistic. It's like they needed God to get saved and they don't need him anymore. They make it on their own. And, and they don't hunger and long and seek and find. And then there are just plain old dead people. I mean, you're sitting here rolling your eyes. You already disagree with almost everything, but you're here anyway. And you have never been turned from darkness to light. In fact, you just go whatever way you want to, and there's no internal light. There's no internal bread of life. There is no awareness of Christ. You're kind of like an article I read yesterday where the man confessed. He said, I'm going to be dust on someone's windowsill in 300 years, and so will you. And that's a godless, atheistic, nihilistic, just hopelessness. That's how we were born. I just came from my office. That's why I was late to church with the, all the baby dedication people, the, all the couples that are dedicating their children. And, and I was in there with them. And I said, are you going to raise this little pagan that's dead in their trespasses and sin? That's how children come out. Even in the Christian homes, they come dead in their trespasses and sin. They are rebels. They are enemies with God. God is their enemy. He is against them until they get reconciled. And are you going to raise that little child, living Christ, in such a, in, in a genuine way that they can't resist knowing and loving and seeking the God of their father that they see in their dad and their mother that they see in, and hear at their mother's hand? We are born this way. Salvation uh, makes us 
go from death to life, and neglect makes us become, and sin makes us muted or blocked. So hungering for God is a doctrine, and Jesus is central to it. And what we saw in hungering for God is three components. And those three components are the three elements we've already studied. We've been doing this for a year, prayer. Jesus is central to prayer. We pray in his name. In fact, he even told us a model that we're supposed to pray, that we're supposed to focus on him and surrender and yield to him and let him provide. And then fasting is all about Christ. Fasting is longing so much for Christ that other things I want to dispense with so that I can focus more. And anything that takes away my attention on him, I want to get rid of and jettison. And now we're, we're in resting. Resting is actually parallel to salvation. The Sabbath, entering into his rest in Hebrews, are all talking about salvation. It's when I come to rest in him. And it shows up in my time. If I'm resting in him, it's kind of like sleep. I need it. You know, I need it. And people that are sleep deprived, it's torture. And, and it's torturous not to need the Lord if you're a Christian. And you feel horrible. And resting, this whole concept of Sabbath, has to do with the Lord's ownership of our time.